In a highly contested runoff election that garnered national attention, Cook County Commissioner Brandon Johnson secured his place as the 57th mayor of the city of Chicago. And Chicago Mayor-elect Brandon Johnson joins us now. I just want to ask you, you won a close, hard-fought race that went to a runoff election. Young voters helped to put you over the top. How did you motivate those young people to turn out? Well, so thank you for having me, you know, today. This is an exciting opportunity um, to engage people all over the city of Chicago and quite frankly around the country. And I do appreciate the energy you all bring um, because I started, you know, my professional career as a middle school teacher. And I wish I had the same tenacity that you all bring to the television every single day because this is what I thought my classroom would look like, this type of engagement and excitement. It didn't always work out that way, but somehow I managed to get through it. Um, but to your point about young people, it's such an incredible, you know, moment where the very young people that I taught who are now, you know, in their late 20s and early 30s, individuals who probably didn't like me very much when they were 12 and 13, I had to go back to them and ask them for their vote. You know, but what we spoke to, we spoke to not just their hopes and aspirations, we actually gave concrete evidence of the work that we've done organizing around economic, racial, and social justice, and how we can actually translate that um, into real policy um, with me on the fifth floor. And, you know, everything from making sure that we have mental health support services, um, of course, making sure that we are um, tapping into real environmental justice, um, good paying jobs, transportation. These are all the things that, you know, the multicultural intergenerational movement that propelled me into this moment uh, were concerned about, but it especially rang true uh, to young voters and grateful to be able to engage of that entire population. Well, Mr. Johnson, we appreciate your words and we appreciate all you did as a teacher. Crime, though, crime was a top issue in this election. Chicago suffered nearly 700 homicides last year, more than 2,800 shootings. What's your plan to fight crime in Chicago? Will things be different in a Johnson administration? Our approach is going to be smart. You know, we're going to get at the root causes, but we're also going to respond to the immediate crisis training and promoting 200 more detectives, making sure that we are implementing the consent decree, of course, making sure that we are enforcing the red flag laws. There are individuals who have guns that should not have them. However, there's a direct correlation between youth employment and violence reduction. We're going to stand that up day one when I'm sworn in. There's also a correlation between making sure that the 911 calls many of which are um, uh, mental health crises, that we have mental health crises professionals showing up to those calls. I mean, we're asking police officers not only to do their difficult job, but someone else's. And that comprehensive balance, um, that's the approach that we're going to take. And I'm very confident that that collective response um, is going to yield uh, much better results. You mentioned your background in education. Education's top of mind all across this country. We've seen cities and teachers clashing strikes in big cities, including Chicago. You're a former public school teacher. How do you use your experience to make sure every student gets that good education? I will. Um, obviously um, prioritize public education and you know being a believer in public education is one of the first things that you can do as as a mayor my children will be uh, our students in the Chicago public schools I'm a product of public education and what we have to do is to make sure that investments are being made but it's not just about investments in the day-to-day -day. it's a comprehensive approach there's a direct correlation between w-2s and closing the achievement gap between black and white and brown students it's also also, um, you know, abysmal the fact that we have well over 20,000 students in the city of Chicago who are without homes. And so addressing the housing crisis, making sure that there are real economic opportunities that exist in communities, and of course making sure that we are funding a, a well-rounded curriculum that includes arts, the trades, you know, drama and speech. The dynamics that actually helped make me whole, not that I was opposed to geometry, I'm very sorry, Mr. Kubitschek, <laughs> but I just not, could not quite figure out those doggone proofs, uh, you know what I'm saying? Uh, but, but thank God for speech and literature and, of course, social studies. Uh, those are the type of dynamics that kept me um, engaged, and I'm going to figure out those proofs one way or the other. Well, I hope you were a fan of math, because I hear that you're one of ten siblings. Is that true? How, how did that shape who you are today? Oh, absolutely. So listen, my parents were remarkable human beings. Uh, yes, it was 10 of us with one bathroom. Oh, so at, at the very least, uh, the country should know that I am the best negotiator in the world. And the key is you have to make alignment with, with your sisters. Always align with your sisters and your day will always flow better. You know, but it really did, um, you know, teach us, you know, my father was not just a public employee. 
and a carpenter. Um, he was also a pastor. So as a carpenter and a pastor, as you can imagine, it's very difficult when you grow up in a house and your father's just like Jesus. You know, but what he taught us, though, was we are only as strong as the person who is struggling the most. And it's that mantra, that axiom that I take to the fifth floor, that the neighborhoods that have been disinvested in and that type of um, disinvestment has made us all feel a little less safe and a little less hope. You know, we have to make sure we, we reroute the rivers, if you will, particularly in the places where there's been drought, to make sure that there's a flow of infrastructure and investments, because that's going to make us all strong. And I'm so grateful. My father is, is still alive. My mother is, has passed on. And what a great you know, honor to, to, to be in this position of someone who came up from Salus, Mississippi, like many families across this country, coming to the north looking for opportunities, and now the son of sharecroppers. Um, um, is, is now prepared to, to run one of the largest economies in the world. It just shows you how remarkable this country really is, and I'm looking forward to serving the city of Chicago. A remarkable story. Ten siblings, one bathroom. Not only did you <laughs> learn to negotiate, I'm sure you learned to compromise. <laughs> Chicago <laughs> Mayor elect right. Brandon Johnson, we thank you so much for being here with us today. Yes, thank you. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.